so friends today we are going to diagnose this uh, motherboard this uh, motherboard number is la9104 and uh, this motherboard is not giving the display it's powering on but it's not giving the display so what we'll do is we'll diagnose this motherboard and uh, we are going to diagnose this motherboard with the help of this book and the signals so here is a page for the no display like uh, these are the different different signals are there and uh, different different like uh, system power okay then plt reset then dram reset then bios then clock the, all the signal will check and uh, first we'll power on and we'll check all the signal so now we are going to turn off we'll apply a power via dc power supply and uh, it's showing a current 11 milliampere so in uh, any laptop if the current is showing 5 to 20 milliampere that means the SI got the power you can see here in this sequence if when we connect the DC power supply to the DC jack and then if the battery charging sections and then the 3 volt and 5 volt section is working okay then the SI got the power and then total uh, power consumed by the DC power supply will be 5 milliampere to 20 milliampere so here is showing out 11 milliampere that means the 3 volt is coming okay so now we are going to turn on this uh, motherboard uh, we are not using a power switch we are using this uh, jumper start so what we have to do is we have to use this uh, probe one probe we have to connect to the ground and another probe to the uh, on off switch so we'll connect to the on off switch and just we'll leave this this probe and then the current will shoot up at that time it's turn on okay so let's start okay you can see here now is a turn on and you can see here the current is showing somewhere around 189 milliampere or 190 milliampere okay so this is the third generation's motherboard and it's current showing a 190 milliampere that means the cpu core wood is not generating if the CPU core will generate, then the current will shoot up above the 700 milliampere because this is a graphic chips also there on the motherboard. So here is the current showing a 197 milliampere. That means by 3 volt, 5 volt, 1.5, 1.8, and 1.05 all voltage is coming, but the CPU core voltage is not generating. So we'll see why the CPU core voltage is not generating. So what we can do is we directly shift to the VRM section and we'll check why the CPU core not generating. So I open here a schematic diagram and uh, this is my VRM section, this is a CPU core section and here is this uh, VRM chips and the location of the chip is uh, pure 700 and the chip number is ISL95833 okay and here is my this two MOSFET and here supposed to core voltage will generate that is the location of the coil is a PL701 PL701 there I should get a CPU core voltage and here supposed to get approximately 1 volt because the CPU core voltage is considered into the current not in the voltage so here we'll get somewhere around 1 volt so what we can do is we check at this coil PL701 whether the 1 volt is coming or not but 1 volt is not coming because the DC meter is showing the current only the 200 milliampere so I'm damn sure that the voltage is not coming at the CPU core but still we'll check the CPU core voltage and then we go back and we'll check why the CPU core is not coming so we'll go first to the PL701 so here we connect the multimeters and uh, the current is showing 200 and we'll check at this coil PL701 and you can see here the voltage is coming zero CPU core is not coming okay so we'll see why the CPU core is not coming. We'll go back and we'll check the why the CPU core is not coming. So we'll now what we do is we go back to the VRM chip. So here is my VRM chip. So this is a VRM chip. Okay, so this is called the VRM chip, CPU core chips. And the location is PU700, number is 9533. And first we'll check the 5 volt supply at the VCC or VDD. The CPU VRM chips require a 5 volt to work. So we'll check the 5 volt VDD or VCC pin. So we'll find where it is. You can see here pin number 21 and pin number 22. Here supposed to come a 5 volt. Okay. Pin number 21 and pin number 22 is called the 5 volt suspend. So we'll check this voltage at pin number 21 and 22. So the current is coming 11 ampere and now he turn on. 
and then we can see uh, 344 milliampere is coming on the DC power supply. That means the 3 volt, 5 volt, everything, all the voltages are coming. But there is some problem. The CPU core is not generating, and some of the voltages are missing. So what we can do is we'll check all the voltages on the each individual coil, and we'll see where is the problem. Abhi, now it, what we'll do is we'll reverse the board like this. Now connect one probe to the ground and check all the voltages. Check all. Start from here. Start from here and check the voltage about that side. That means uh, closer to the capacitors. Okay. Check and you can you show on there also. See the five volt is coming. Then three point three. Check here properly. Three point three is coming. So these are the three three point three and five voltage. Then you can check this side the RAM supply. One point five DDR three. Yes, sir. RAM supply, right? Okay. The next is this supply. 1.05. Which chips? PCH. Yes, 1.05 is going to the PCH. Yes, okay. Then the next is uh, here. Here is the graphic chip is there and here is the CPU. So we'll check the CPU core. You can see here the CPU core is not coming. CPU core is not coming so we'll see why the cpu core is not coming so first we'll see the concept why the cpu core is not coming we'll go to our book and we'll see uh, uh, what other things are coming now you can see in this book the adapter input voltage going entered into the different so here are the different different buck converters this is the 5 volt and 3 volt buck converter so we check 3 volt and 5 volt both are coming and then we check uh, 1.5 buck converter the 1.5 also coming then we check 1.05 that 1.05 also coming 1.8 we didn't check but that also we can we can check 1.8 and the cpu core here the cpu core and the graphics core these two voltages are not coming in our motherboard and one more thing that we have to check that 3.3 and 5 volt here is a 3.3 and 5 volt buck converter there is a one more two voltages called the suspend voltage always and suspend voltage now we'll see what is the always and suspend voltage? So this is called the always voltage. 3.3 always and 5 volt always. So this 3.3 and 5 volt is coming from 3.3 and 5 volt section that is coming that we already checked on the motherboard. And uh, there is one more spec uh, in between. This mostly N channel or P channel is depend on circuit to circuit. So here is the N channel more spec. And when we press the power button at that time, SI will generate one signal that is called SUSP if it is a compel motherboard if it is a compel motherboard then SIO generate this SUSP signal this signal is coming from the SIO and trigger this MOSFET and here are supposed to come a 3 volt here supposed to come a 3 volt and then what happen is this 3 volt will pass to here and this 5 volt will pass to here that means this 3 volt now it's become a 3 volt suspend and this 5 volt is become to 5 volt suspend okay so this volt is supposed to come so now what we'll do is we'll check on the first schematic diagram and then we'll check on the motherboard so here i open the the schematic diagram and this is that uh, section always and suspend and now you can see here in the schematic uh, here is a mospec for uh, three volt always so this is a three volt always and the mospec location is a q Z7 and the number of this MOSFET is S1428 and this MOSFET is N channel MOSFET okay if the arrow is inside means the N channel MOSFET and here is a drain this from drain this 3 volt is coming this 3 volt always is coming and it's going to the suspend cell but when it will the pass the voltage when the gate will be triggered and the who will trigger this gate the gate will trigger by this signal it's called the SUSP signal and this SUSP signal coming from SIO. When the SIO trigger this gate at that time, this voltage will pass to here. So first we'll locate where this component is. So on this board, these are these two MOSFET for always to suspend. We'll check the input and output voltage. So we'll take a multimeter and we'll check. So this is the input. So this is the input, 3.3 volt. It's from the drain and then it's going to the source. Now we connect the output and you can see on the output, it is showing a 1.8 volt. How much it's showing? 1. 1. It's supposed to show how much? 3 volt. A 3.3 .3 volt, but it's showing a 1.8 volt. That means there is something wrong in this MOSFET. 
okay so we'll we'll first see the how much the gate voltage is coming so this mosfet is n channel mosfet so what i'll do is i'll connect to the gate and i'll see how much voltage is coming to the gate and uh, you can see on gate. this uh, gate the gate volt supposed to come approximately 3 volt and here is coming a 2.8 that's okay this coming to the gate that means the gate is triggering but the voltage is not passing to the output okay so this is the gate voltage and it's triggering to the mosfet but the my 3 volt is not passing from drain to source the switch is not activating the switch is not working so in that case my the mosfet may be open so what i'll do is i'll take a tweezer and i will short that particular mosfet now i'll see whether the my board is working or not uh, how i'll come to know whether my board is working i will come to know my board is working with the help of my dc power supply if the current is shoot up above the 700 milliampere that means my all voltages are coming so let's start and let's see do is i'll take this tweezer and i will short this particular mosfet from drain to source and then i'll give the power and i will see how much the current is showing let's take take and short that mosfet drain to source drain to source and then apply the power apply the power the power is applied turn on turn on one probe connected to the ground another probe to the power switch and then we can see see the current is shoot up is gone to 1.4 ampere and the fan is spinning current is shoot up and then the board is turn on so friend in this way we have to diagnose the problem and now what we'll do is we'll Uh, put another mosfet over there and we'll check the display this particular mosfet is bad okay so we'll change this mosfet so we are removing this uh, mosfet so we remove this mosfet and uh, we are going to put uh, another working mosfet over there this mosfet is a n channel mosfet and there we are going to put n channel mosfet so we are putting another working mosfet over there so we connect the new mosfet there and now we'll check check current is shoot up to the 1 ampere and you can see the display is there all right you can see here so in this way we have to diagnose the problem so friend in this way you have to diagnose the problem in the motherboard so first thing you have to see uh what is the symptom it is showing and uh, how much the current showing in a dc power supply and accordingly you have to diagnose the problem if it is a dead then you have to diagnose accordingly if it is a no display then you have to diagnose accordingly you have to see how much the current is showing and then you have to follow different different steps which we are seen practically and to diagnose the different problem in the motherboard from latest to latest you have a good utility and good things is this book from with the help of this book you can diagnose so many problem like dead laptop no display then dim display then white display any problem battery not charging or type c concept everything is there in this book so it's a very good things you can you think you can use this books and diagnose any problem in the laptop and desktop motherboard so thank you very much